Bros Cast Gamers. Bro, 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 my name's Flip Trick, and this is the second episode of our Bros Cast podcast. I'm here with the other members of the of the cast. We've got Jordan, Lolo, uh, Junior, Good day, Tessa, and also Claire. Top of the morning. <laughs> How are you guys doing today? Yeah, not too bad. Yeah, it's been a while. Pretty good. We, it's been a while since we've been able to record. Uh, it seems like. Every, I don't know, we keep it running at issues, so I'm glad we're finally able to get back into this. No. Have you yeah, that was, that was, that was Tobin's fault. <laughs> Tobin. Just playing Tobin. Of course. How's your Battlefield 3 stuff going over the past couple weeks? Mental. Isn't that, Junior? Mental. Mental? Yep, completely mental. By the, yep. good, by the good grace of a lot of our members, we've been able to win a good few matches as well, and uh, start, finally start to get in, uh, very strict re- regime we've chosen the maps we want to play on uh, we've got strategies down you know uh, really coming together as one big whole unit now and it's, it was pretty hard to do at first because we've got so many members and everyone can't be online every night including the, the guys who are trying to teach everyone it but like there's a lot of really good communication with it throughout the squad now so like it just seems to have a, a ripple effect that we teach some guys some things and then they go off and teach the other members and by the time we all get together as a crew we all know what we're thinking cool. well see I'm, I'm a little bit worried at the moment because um, I think I might be in a different platoon <laughs> because everything you've just said seems completely the other way to me mm-hmm. yeah, but you're the attacker <laughs> and the defender so we have different <laughs> points of view I'm just going to check Balog, make sure that I'm in the right platoon here. You know? <laughs> nah, everything that Claire said is, is pretty much right, you know what I mean? Um, we have had some good victories. We've also had a few losses as well, and I think it's taught us a few things as well. What's your um, ranking right now? Mm, you've got me. Yeah. There's, no kind of, um, there's no leaderboards in like, clan versus mm. clan matches or anything like that. No, but, uh, I thought there was. There's only kind of personal score that you could keep. Oh. Well, that would be something cool they should should add. Maybe they'll add that in the next one. Yeah, yeah hopefully. That would be a brilliant order, to be honest with you. That, that well, thing would be brilliant. A, to be honest now, um, with Battlefield 3, there's an awesome feature that's tied in with the website. Um, Battle Lock uh, app of it, which is you can create matches, so every player is... You can create the match online, and then when it comes time to the match, you automatically join into it on the right team, and everything's all organised. And you know, it's yeah. it's a perfect way of doing clan matches rather than having people join servers. And it just that's really, really, really messy. And just, afterwards, you can actually see the the statistics of who won and buy how many tickets and stuff. Well, that's pretty cool. Sounds yeah, interesting. It's a, yeah, it's an in-game uh, kind of clan match uh, arranger, if you will. Cool. Yep. I need to get that get in there with you. It sounds like a lot of fun. Well, yeah, definitely. A lot of our members have been asking that want to tea bag you. <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> that's an epidemic at the moment uh, between Battlefield uh, Rose members. <laughs> yeah, all thanks to Bob Marley. It became a contagious thing, and now everybody's doing it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anything new with the website you guys want to talk about? Um, not a great deal. We've added a, f- a few n- new sections to the forums. Um, you know, we've we've uh, added a competitive multiplayer matches area where you can view match news and training discussions, or Battlefield Three match times and dates, and uh, after match reports, which was uh, an idea brought to us by Mulder Goose. And uh, basically, what it is, you know, we'll we'll run through what the you know, like what happened in the particular matches that happened previously. All the um, all the tactics are posted on the website, and that's how we you apply to our clan matches and stuff like that as well. It's all done on our website. So it's, it's all dedicated pages for that. But um, 
the training sessions and stuff like the tactics we have our own section that's limited to members we get to choose them at what members are allowed into that trade to see our tactics and stuff like that so that's private and that's one feature that we do that definitely yeah, also we have uh, we've been working on um we're trying to segregate not not basically segregate the community but we've noticed that uh, battlefield 3 plays a massive part with the band of brothers so we have actually created um another um url website and it's uh the uh, battlefieldbros.net or battlefieldbros.com um it's not actually up and running at the minute we've got we've got a holding page but i just thought i'd mention that it's coming soon and i think that one of the last things to mention about field tree is uh one of our members journal uh he's out there enrolling us into this tournament that will be played over legs junior like you, or slip sorry like you were saying but that will have standings and you know we have to get out of the group stages to go into the quarterfinals and the semi-final it's a whole big tournament and we're in on that anyway and i think that's starting on the 5th of may i think oh, that's so really the practice yeah, mm-hmm. that's why we were, we were online training there tonight. So we're mm-hmm. going to get we've got a clan match tomorrow, a clan match on Saturday, and I think we're going to be training then again on Sunday. Oh, cool. All right, well, I guess let's get into what we've been playing for the past couple of weeks. Jordan, you want to tell us how much you're loving Malicious? Oh, God, this game. Oh, my God. I'm sorry, free isn't even worth it. Like, this game is such a piece of shit. <laughs> I I just I can't get over. I was maybe it was because it was really late when I was playing it, but I think it's just because this game is a giant turd. Yeah, it's that not it, good. it was it, it it has some of the worst um, camera control mechanics I've ever seen in a game. And it's just it gives you little to no instruction on how to play the game. Yeah. Um, it kind of reminded me of El Shaddai. I don't know if any of you guys played that. Yep. Really yeah, sure. that was another game where I'm just like, I don't. Why am I playing this? <laughs> yeah, I think what they were trying to do with this game was like a modernized Mega Man style game. It just it didn't work. I didn't like it at all. I just couldn't get into it. Yeah, no, no, it, it was horrible. I, I I was so disappointed. I'm like, oh, this looks kind of cool. And it's like anime esque, and then I get into it. I'm like, what the fuck am I doing? Like, when does this end? <laughs> <laughs> and it just didn't. I'm yeah. like, fuck this. I'm done. Yeah. Did you play anything good? Uh, well, I've played some good stuff, yeah. I picked up Injustice uh, last week. Cool, how you So I've been playing a bit of that. You know what? It's really good until I start getting frustrated like I usually do with fighting games. So, uh, yeah, my hand's a little sore. We'll say that. Yeah, yeah I've had a couple <laughs> uh, days it's worth thumbs, too. Yeah, but uh, no, it's been really good. I really enjoyed the story, although I blew through it pretty quick. Yeah. Um, Who's your character? Besides that... I don't know, I like fast characters, so I've been going with Harley Quinn, uh, yeah. Green Arrow, Flash, and um, Hawkgirl. Yeah. Did you play as Aquaman Those are some yet? of my favorites. Uh, I played Aquaman a little bit just uh, through the story, and I don't know, I didn't really, I didn't care for him that much. I mean, they did make Aquaman badass, I will I will yeah, credit them that. Yeah, he's way too Which good. was awesome. Yeah. Yeah, my favorite um, character in DC in the whole DC universe has always been Harley Quinn. So I was really excited when she was in there, and I've tried to play as her and kind of got it, but she's, she's, she's a little tricky. Best. Yeah, she's hard. She's hard to work yeah. with. I'm a lot better with uh, with the Flash and uh, Deathstroke, who's actually probably my best character. But I'm still trying to practice up with Harley Quinn, get better with her. Seems mm-hmm. like her her best moves are when she jumps into that. She has like this stance that she goes into where she lays on the ground and she has like that opens up different attacks. And it seems like you have to yeah find a good time to get into that stance without making yourself too vulnerable. But mm-hmm. yeah, it's a really good game. I was impressed with it. I, yeah, I, I, I just happy. fancy Harlequin. I, I just wanted to put that one in there. You were <laughs> quite find her quite sexually attractive. <laughs> Well, she's got some nice outfits in this game, I'll say that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was playing the iOS version of the game. I played that so I could unlock the Arkham City costume for her. And, mm-hmm. yeah, it was pretty cool. It took forever to get it. You have to get, like, I think it was, like, 50,000 coins in the game, which takes quite a while to do. And then that unlocks her outfit for the console version. And if you get, like, 100,000, yeah. you get a Batman Beyond costume. But I don't think I can stomach the iOS game for that long. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm hoping they release a version on Android just so I can actually play it. I mean, I got the Arkham costumes with my copy of the game, just as pre-order bonuses, but um, there's some other unlockables that I want to get. Yeah. So hopefully they make an Android version at some point. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, what else have I been playing? I finally gave Dungeon Defenders a try just because I was like, eh, it's free and might as well at least see what it's like. And it, it's a cute little game. I mean, like you said, it's nothing terribly complicated, but I don't know. Easy trophies. Are you talking about Dungeon Defenders or Labyrinth Legends? Dungeon Defenders. I'll, I also did try Labyrinth Legends, too. Okay. I think Labyrinth Legends is the game I was talking about last time. Is that what it was? Yeah. I, I haven't played Dungeon uh, Defenders on the PS3 yet. Okay, maybe I'm getting mixed up. Then maybe I'm talking about Labyrinth Legends. Is that the one where you have to get like five stars on each? Yep. Uh, okay, yeah, that's the one I'm talking about. Oops. Yeah. Dungeon Defenders is like a like a tower defense game. Oh, okay, yeah, no, that was I, I've downloaded that. I haven't tried that one yet. Um, yeah, no, Labyrinth Legends was it, it was cute. It's something my girlfriend would play. <laughs> yeah, I, I finished it up. Got all the trophies in that. It actually mm-hmm. got a lot more enjoyable when I found out you could block. I played like the. Ent- Three fourths of the game, and I had no idea you could block. So I was making it way harder than it needed to be. But once I found out that you could you do can that, block. Yeah, if you hold like L one, your character puts a shield up, and you're <laughs> completely invulnerable to everything. Oh shit! That's, that would yeah, that'd make life a lot easier. <laughs> yeah, it's a game changer, and I don't think they ever tell you that in the game. I just accidentally. No, I don't. Out. Yeah, no, I don't think I ever saw that. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then I picked up a few older games: Sound Shapes and Outland. Okay, cool. Both pretty good. Mm-hmm. Sound Shapes was a lot of easy trophies. Yeah. All those, yeah. those challenge le- challenge missions at the end are pretty rough. Yeah, I'm not enjoying those so far. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, that pretty much covers everything I've been playing. I tried the Soul Sacrifice demo, so I'm going to give that a bit more time before I really decide if I'm going to pick it up and... Um, Played a bit more Metal Gear Solid 3, just trying to get trophies while I've been on vacation. Cool. What, what was your initial yeah. impression of Soul Sacrifice? Uh, I like it, but the only thing I'm a little iffy on is the fact that it's very closed-in environments. Um, yeah. the control scheme's nice. I do like all the the grinding for weapons, things like that. But, yeah, it's just the closed-in environments. I don't know if that's something I really dig. Yeah. My biggest complaint was the... I thought I was going to actually like be a character and evolve my own character, which I guess in a sense you're doing, but I didn't like opening up mm. a book and trying to find the different chapters. It felt like I was playing Wonder Book on the Vita. <laughs> that's that's my only complaint. The combat's really good. Yeah. I wish you could jump, but I know that was the only thing that kinda of bugged me. I'm like if I could jump this would be a lot more fun. Yeah. But I'm I'm definitely looking forward to playing the rest of it, playing through the whole, the rest of the game. So Did you you picked it up? Nice. Yeah, the demo lasts for about I think a lot. Of, most a lot of people have gotten like 15 hours of it out of it. Is what I've heard. So and that transfers into wow. the original game. Um, so I think the game's like 20 to 40 hours long. Is what I've heard. Oh, okay. And it's supposed well, to get too bad, a, lot, then. a lot better as you go. Then I have to give it some more time on the demo and yeah. see if I really like it. Cool. Claire, what have you been up to? Where'd your six percent come from? My six percent well for since we last did the uh, podcast, my six percent must have come from that um, awful, awful cheat that I did be using. You know that uh, double platinum for Vita. Yeah, I got it. Then I got myself up to forty nine. Not not really giving a crap what Junior thinks, so I'm feeling pretty happy <laughs> about that. Like, so. But uh, I'm hitting, I'm right about to get my fiftieth platinum, and I feel like it's a milestone for me. So I chosen my game that I wanted that them and it's a game with a free off plus it must have been about seven months ago now it's just cause two I really really like it so I decided right that's gonna be my 50th platinum so I've just been working away on that oh cool I've always wanted to play uh, it I started it uh, before Sleeping Dogs came out just if you had a save file you got like extra stuff in Sleeping Dogs so I played for about 10 minutes but I really want to get into it it seemed pretty cool yeah, well, I'm a big fan of analysis. It's, I really do like it, and 
uh, if there's a just cause streak from now, I mean, it, for me, that'll be day one. But I haven't heard anything about that, but I'm really, really hoping. Yeah, there was some Just Cause 2 announcement recently. They talked about uh, multiplayer on the, I think it's on the PC version, I don't know, but there's like a beta going on right now for Just Cause 2 multiplayer. I would love to play it. Yeah, I mean, it's it's an epic action movie. Well, that's what it is. The whole game is just an epic action movie. It's, it's quite spectacular and really amazing. Do you think? Do you think it'd cross over to a multiplayer though? Because uh, you know, myself, um, you know, before Uncharted came out, uh, Uncharted Two, I thought yeah, it'd be a great idea to have a multiplayer on that type of game. But you know, when it did come out, I thought to myself, you know, it's just not interesting enough to play. I don't think they should do it in the multiplayer as in like the way they did it with Uncharted as in like they put you into like little small maps and get you to do objectives because the whole thing that just cause to is I mean it's a huge huge open world so I think the only way they could do a multiplayer was to host that whole map on a server like Defiance and just let kind of like a Grand Theft Auto as well you do remember yeah, just let people run around and they can be anywhere at any one time yeah. Come on. Man, that's that's what they need yeah. to do. Co-op games uh, are by far the best yeah, for that like, sort of I mean, thing. It just cost two is like uh, you can go. You have to go and like hundred percent complete like a military base, like you're sabotaging a lot of fuel tanks and stuff like that. But like if you had like, someone there with you, I mean, you can get in a a, a gunner seat, a, a car, or a headed helicopter. Someone else could be doing that while you're on the ground taking out lads, and then you could even just kill each other if you wanted. You're know. actually describing Battlefield Three, aren't you? <laughs> it's easy to get mixed. It's easy to get mixed up because the genre is too mixed. But no, yeah. I, I've been really liking it. It's it's a toughy for the uh, platinum now. It's a really really long one. It's taken me. I finished the game on the hardest difficulty uh, ten hours ago, and I'm still collecting stuff. That takes two places, yeah. doesn't it? No, you can start off on the hardest difficulty and play the whole game throughout like that, and that's what I did. <laughs> did you get the bad thing about that is uh, when you're when you're running around doing something like clearing enemies, you have to kill a load of enemies, and on the hardest difficulty, it's kind of tough. Like, and there's no option to to go to lower difficulties either. So, is this the game where there's one trophy for like beating the game without killing a certain amount of citizens? Is that just cause two? No, no. I, I think uh, you're thinking of Dishonored. No, I know it was ah, an open yeah. world. I know it was an open world game. Oh, okay. Yeah, there, yeah. there is there is a, a trophy on Dishonored, isn't there, for not doing that? Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Claire, I think. What do you think of Thomas Was Alone? I saw you were playing that. I think you're the only other one, other one of us other than me that's played it. What do you think of that? I I did like it. Um, Music and everything, but it's very uh, like it's a mixture of Tetris and another kind of game. Uh, but like the thing that I really, really like about it, and the reason why I like it so much, is because it's complete indie. I mean, like obviously, we all, if you were interested in playing the game, you would have heard about the backstory of it. With that, just this one guy just you know made the made it over a weekend, you know, when his girlfriend was away, and now it's being published on the PlayStation Network, the PlayStation Plus people, like, it's... Yeah. You can follow him on Twitter, it's, uh, at Mike Bithel. He's actually a pretty cool guy. Yeah, he's very interactive on it as well, so... Yeah. yeah. I really liked it. I, I didn't get much of a Tetris vibe from it, I got more... It seemed a lot like Sound Shapes to me, but... I, I haven't really played Sound Shapes. Oh. Well, if you like Thomas Was Alone, you'll love Sound Shapes. So you might want to give that a shot. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Especially yeah, sound like, shapes is a lot of fun. If you like the music in Thomas was alone, they take the music to a whole new level in sound shapes. Yeah, I've been really, really need to get it, and I know it's at a ridiculous price now on the PlayStation Store, so I will be thinking about uh, up, or updating my account. And there's another double platinum for you too. Is it? Is it still cross by? Is it? I don't know. Not the cheat I, I think platinum. it is. I think it's. Still yeah, it by. is. I don't see why they take that away, but. You just get all the yeah. samples on the PS3, sync it up to the, P- to yeah. the Vita, and I'm, there you go. I might Claire, Claire will definitely be buying that one. Though. I I definitely will. gonna do it. If it pisses Junior off, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Definitely. It's, very, yeah. it's very hard to get though. Um, at, you beat the game, and that gives you a gold trophy. And then there's a bunch of like training missions you have to do, which 
they're time consuming, but they're not too difficult. But then you have to go through. I think there's 16 different challenge maps, and it's just some of the hardest platforming ever. It's ridiculous to the point where you just want to throw your controller through the TV. I had that with more Almost Storm Mercy. <laughs> yeah, more. You played more Storm Mercy as well, didn't you, Flip? Actually, because I was I was chasing your ghost car for a few then. And In which game? Then that's more Storm Mercy. Oh yeah. I did not like that. I can I could not get the controls down. I really wanted to. It's an extremely hard platinum. I don't know how I managed to get it. And I got a double platinum of it, but like if anyone else has got out there that has it or has tried to do it and give up, they'd know how hard it is. So I'm glad I got the double platinum. So fuck you, Junior. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's just the way it works for me. Yeah. Uh, and Thomas was alone. I thought it was pretty interesting. If you like pause the game you can adjust the sound levels and you can turn the like the narrator you can turn his volume all the way down and turn up like a voiceover and it's kind of like the director's commentary of a movie like um, instead of the narrator talking to you it's just Mike Bithel just talking throughout the level throughout the entire game just telling you like where his inspirations came from and how he came up with the idea for certain puzzles i thought it was kind of interesting to it, it made the game worth playing through a second time like the commentaries, you know, or like in movies and stuff like that, you know, you can turn on cast commentary and stuff like that. Yeah, it's just like that. I thought it was pretty interesting. Um, a lot of the stuff that he said actually was pretty cool, so I learned a lot about the game. I liked it. Um, I, I was surprised how how much of a story there actually was to the game. I didn't think it, there was going to be a story at all, so I was kind of surprised by that. By the end of the game, I actually like, started to develop feelings for the different shapes. <laughs> <laughs> you need to get out more. <laughs> you get you get attached to these guys. Yeah, uh, no, I can understand that because at the end of the day, I love Square. Every game character that any of us get attached to is just a lot of polygon shapes. You know what I mean? So, but it doesn't matter where you know one big square or a million different squares done out to look like solid snake. It's not the same to me. You know? Yeah. Well, so you'd like to play a game as a square? Rather than play a game, I have some, played games as well. I'm just saying, I'm just saying other, other than having some ultimate graphics, you know, <laughs> maybe you'd rather be playing with a circle or a square. They you'd be happy everything with you're talking about in the game, too, which is kind of cool. Yeah, go play it there, Junior. Go play it. And the ending was no. pretty, pretty interesting. I'm not going to spoil anything, but I thought the ending was interesting how they left it open ended, kind of gave you room for your own interpretation of how the ending came came about. That's good. Well, maybe in time, like uh, by the time we get around to the next podcast, I'll definitely finish the story on it, and maybe a few other members up as well. We can cool. discuss uh, different viewpoints on it. Yeah. Once it, once I started, I couldn't put it down. Um, I think it only took me like three or four hours to finish up all the trophies. Fitrick, would you be able to tell me is it best to play it on PS3 or Vita? Uh, I played it on PS3 just so I could record my walkthrough. Um, I don't see why it would be any different on the Vita though. Some games I've noticed, I've played a PS3 version and a Vita version, and it swings either way. Like, uh, I mean, I've played the PlayStation All-Stars, and I definitely think it's, it's a lot more fun on the Vita. Definitely. Uh, I just, for me, it was. And then uh, when I played Sly Cooper, the PS3 version was definitely a lot better. It just mm. it took a little bit too much out of the Vita version to get it down onto the size so that I could fit on the smallest memory card. That's what I believe in. Yeah. I don't usually tend. I don't play the same game on on both consoles. I don't usually jump back and forth. It's usually I play on the PS3 if that's an option. Otherwise, I'll play on the Vita. But I, I don't. Yeah. I've really pull it. Like Guacamelee, I heard was really really good on the Vita. Unless you started on the PS3 and then the Vita kind of felt sm- it felt too small. I guess I don't know. Yeah. Did you ever play Guacamelee? Did you get into that? No, but I already have it. Like. I have, in a, I have it in the cart in my mind because I've already planned to buy a, a network card to, to update my funds and I've already have all, all the 20 euros spent on what I want and one of it is Guacamelee as well. So. You have to play that. That is an amazing game. It's just... Yeah, well, I loved I loved the Tales from Mutant Blobs. I love that. Yeah. Drinkbox Studios the, and the other games. All that. I'm really big fans of that so I have to give Guacamelee a try. I have to. Yeah, Drinkbox knocked it out of the park with this one. This is probably probably my game of the year so far. I think it's better than 
Tomb Raider, uh, Bioshock Infinite. Like I think Guacamole is better than all that, which is yeah, pretty Quack, surprising Colin, to say. Colin Moriarty of um, IGN. Mm-hmm. Uh, no taxation on Twitter. He he gave it his vote for um, game of the year as well so far. Yeah, cool. Along that that along with Nino Cooney as well. Nino Cooney's interesting also very, enough. Very good. Yeah, interesting enough. Uh, tr- uh, two PlayStation exclusives as well. So. Yeah, yeah. Guacamole is just I I had a blast with it. It's the only game where I finished and immediately wanted to start my second playthrough right then. Like right when I finished the the normal playthrough, jumped in on hard and just I plowed through it okay okay i'll buy it monday i'll buy it monday okay it's good yeah it's a lot of fun i i'm still stuck at the last boss though i need to i need to go back and try again which one which one are you fighting uh very last boss what's he look like uh um it's the skeleton dude the okay. main villain okay i was just wondering if you're on so the, the real last boss or the second to last boss that's what i was asking <laughs> ah oh, okay yeah, no, it's painful right now. I had to, I had to put it down and go. Okay, no, I need to stop playing because otherwise I'm gonna break a controller. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It just comes down to but, I mean, timing it, on that guy. Like people, yeah. people ask me on YouTube like for different strategies. You just have to make sure you're like constantly moving, always dodging, and you basically have one like enough time to do one quick attack and then back off and make sure you're as far away on the other side of the screen as you can, but so he doesn't hit you. But if you can get the timing mm-hmm. down on that guy right and just make sure you dodge immediately after you do your attack, you should be able to kill him without getting hit. It's just developing that timing. That's how it was for me, at yeah, least. Maybe I'll give it a try tonight. Cool. Junior, what about you? What have you been up to other than Battlefield? Uh, Battlefield 3, as usual. Um, I've also just started um, a walkthrough playthrough uh, with Alain Noir. Um, recently become, uh, begun recording. Um, which I've just uploaded the first two episodes, and the game itself was, uh, you know, it's pretty good. Yeah. yeah. It, it's really repetitive, is what I found when I played it. I played it, I think, right when it first came out. It was really, really good, but then near the end, it's just like, why am I still doing this? Oh, I loved it. I, did. I, th- I thought it was pretty groundbreaking, do you know what I mean? You know, it's like it brought in uh, the Grand Theft Auto type thing of driving about, but also, um, you know, looking at the, the reactions of people's faces to tell whether they're lying or, you know what I mean? Yeah, that was uh, Finding clues. I thought, I thought it was brilliant. I re- you know, if, if I was honest, I'd put it in my top ten games of uh, PS3, definitely. I am. Um, you know, the way I feel about it was um, I really I I really enjoyed playing it, but I think I expected too much of it before it came out, and I was disappointed. Yeah, maybe but you were I expecting like really a Grand Theft Auto type thing. Do you know, what I mean, I think a lot of people felt like that. You know, I mean, it it was something completely new, completely different, and you know, I'd love to see a, a you know a, the a next gen on on the PlayStation Four. Unfortunately, Team Bondi went under. Um, but hopefully, you know, if, if Rockstar know what they're talking about, they'll um, they'll they'll get it going. Definitely. Yeah. Cool. Bit of luck, right? Yeah. Is there anything else you've been playing, or? Um, no, not really. You know, it, it, it's it's pretty hard to explain how much time Battlefield takes up. Yeah, you, guys, you know what I mean. Yeah. Espe- especially when you're one of the leaders, it, it becomes almost like. Every time you put your PlayStation 3 on, that's what you're drawn into. Somebody sends you an invite, somebody asking you a question. You know, it, it just it just overtakes all your game. I think that you, you, that you plan to do on the PlayStation. As soon as you switch it on, that's gone out the window and you're straight back onto Battlefield 3. Yeah, well, there's only four leaders uh, for about roughly 40 members, and two of them are with you now. Like, so it's only German yeah. and St. Judas there to do it too. But, like, uh, yeah. and, but so many... So many more members, like, but yeah, like just said, the good ones are here at the minute. I just want to state that. Yeah. The other two are a little bit crazy. Yeah, yeah. We, we wouldn't allow them to be on the show. Oh no, definitely not. No. No. So if you're listening, don't even think about it. <laughs> <laughs> Step back, Judas. You ain't got a chance, boy. <laughs> the fuck yeah! All right. So, uh, what's the next topic, boys? Um. Well, other than what we've already talked about, I started to get into Dead Island Riptide a little bit. 
If you've played the first Dead Island, it, this is pretty much the exact same game. Same graphics engine, everything. It's more of Dead Island, which, if you like the first one, it's not a bad thing, but if you didn't like the, the first one, this isn't going to sway you the other way. It's the same game, pretty much, just different locations. But I played a little bit of it. Um, I got distracted with other games, but I, I'll go back to it eventually, because I like the first one, so... Yeah, I like the first one as well. Um, I think I'll be picking up on Monday, and I know um, two of our members, Razzle and Irish OG, are playing as well. So, with me and you, Flip, uh, I think we could do a full, maybe even a full four co op, you know, I mean, just a full, full story. If you want to, I'd be more than happy to do that, because there's, there's trophies in there. Both Ted Island and Star Trek have, uh, like, full co op playthrough trophies. And I need to find someone to play the, and play the entire game with. So I'd be more than happy to do that. And then we could chase that platinum together. Yeah, definitely. Um, so if there's anyone listening around like that as well, let's be playing them games soon enough as well. We'll be active on that. So we can arrange a, a bit of help if he's needed as well. Yeah. And I also played a little bit of Army of Two, The Devil's Cartel. I played most of it when it first came out and just finished it up uh, a couple nights ago. It's all right. It's not too bad. Um, it's better than the previous Army of Two games, in my opinion. I think this is probably the best one, but it's nothing too exciting. The story is almost non-existent. It doesn't. It just seems like you're going from location to location, just randomly killing people. Um, That's there's... kind of what any any Army of Two game has been, though, hasn't it? You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. So this is more of and... that, but um, the combat seemed to work a lot better than the others. The other Army 2 mm. games. I don't know. It, it was fun to play through, but nothing I'd rave about. Then yeah. I, was, I, I think last week on the Vita Draw Slasher came out. Uh, I think it was six ninety nine or so. Um, I wasn't too impressed with it. It was. It felt like I was playing a, like an iPhone game. It felt like Fruit Ninja, but you had a, had a character you're trying to control at the same time. It just the controls are kind of. It's almost too hard for the. The mechanics are too hard for the game, which I know, there's some challenge maps you have to do that are just like almost impossible. I've played through the game, finished it up, got the trophies for the initial playthrough, and just told the challenge missions, I'm done. I, I don't, I didn't like it. I wasn't a fan. Um, then I also played through God Mode, which is actually kind of cool. Um, it's like I didn't know when I bought it. I thought it was just like a third-person shooter. I didn't know it was like a multiplayer. You like always played multiplayer. Um, there's like five or six different levels that you can go through. You, you can start wherever you want. Basically, the story behind it is your your character dies, and you're trying to go through hell and, I guess, gain enough power. You have to like level up your character enough until you reach the max level and attain God mode, and then I guess you fight your way out of hell. Uh, but Instead of like a character creation at the beginning, there's a cadaver creation, and your character starts at level zero, and you have horrible weapons. But as you play it, it actually becomes more enjoyable once you unlock some of the weapons, level up a little bit. It starts to get pretty cool. So that was that was fun. I don't think it was really worth the the nine ninety nine, but I don't know. I had a little bit of fun with it. And then I played a little bit more Defiance, and this week. Uh, it's not really PlayStation related, but this week Neverwinter came out. So the new MMO, it's the new Dungeons and Dragons MMO. It's actually really good. I wasn't expecting much from a free-to-play MMO, but I actually really like this one. So it's amazing that you can be surprised by a lot that's uh, that are free to play. Yeah. If you, I'm, I'm a sucker for MMOs. Anytime a new MMO comes out, I usually try to check it out. The combat in this is a lot like Terra. Where you have the your mouse cursor and you're kind of just aiming that around, I think. Um, mm-hmm. What was it? It's DC Universe Online had that same combat system. Um, this is kind of like that, but it, it okay. It's set in like almost like a World of Warcraft style area. I don't know, like the lore mm-hmm. and all that. It's Dungeons and Dragons. Everybody knows what the lore behind that is, but I don't know. The environments yeah. are similar to what you'd see in World of Warcraft with a different combat system, so it's kind of cool. So, I'll nice. probably be playing that quite a bit over the next couple of weeks when I at least see what the end game's like, so 
What I've played so far is pretty good. I'll, ch I'll check it out then. Cool. Well, let me know when you do, because I am looking for people to play with. So. Yeah, for sure. Yep, should be fun. Um, well, that's everything we've been playing. We'll go over the the trophy standings real quick. Um, from the last time we recorded until now, I uh, will just go through the score ranking. Looks like uh, I came in first place between the four of us uh, with a forty one percent level increase in one platinum. Uh, Jordan came in on second with thirty five percent level increase. And then Claire. And Junior both tied with a 6% level increase, but then Claire has that double platinum that he's been talking about the whole show. Mm -hmm. So I, yeah. I, I'd say that puts him in third instead of tied. Yeah, it's not, it wouldn't be the first time I'm better than Junior, let me put it this way. I'll tell you that. <laughs> better at bragging. <laughs> <laughs> so right now that puts me at level 17, 34% with 33 Platinums. Jordan's level 14, 5% with 3 Platinums. Claire is 53% of level 20 with 49 Platinums. And Junior's yeah. at level 21, 88% with 54 Platinums. So really, Junior is still in the lead, so you still have some more time. To yeah, I'm actually <laughs> tensing up here. I'm actually <laughs> tensing my muscles up. <laughs> well, I tell you what, uh, I do believe that once you get up to this kind of height, there is a certain uh, aspect of uh, complacency about it, uh, definitely. But yeah. seeing how much you two guys are at the jumping up in the last two weeks doesn't do me any justice. It's sleeping well at night. So I think we're going to have to, next time, next time the podcast is going on, me and Junior will show you who's boss. Okay, we'll see. <laughs> We'll see if we can make a six percent rise higher. All right. Six. Well, Claire will cheat. So <laughs> yeah, he'll just find more double platinums. Yeah. Right. We shouldn't have told him about sound shapes. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, uh, well, if I see him playing sound shapes, I'm just going to go load up uh, slide four. <laughs> I haven't, I haven't finished uh, that yeah. yet. There you go. All right. Stop playing all them Lego games. <laughs> I, Feel free, that'll, that'll give me more time to, to catch up to you because those take quite a while to get I've, through. I've, a, I've got three Lego games sat here actually that I can uh, plan on, so I'll give me another three. I actually like the Lego games. I'm looking forward to their next Lego. one. The Marvel Lego heroes. games. I hate I'm telling you, Lego games are brilliant, mate. I absolutely love Lego games. Yeah. It's and a nice I'm, not, of I'm not embarrassed to say it, are they? Do you know what I mean? I think they're really good fun. Yeah. I've always enjoyed them. There hasn't been a single one I didn't like. Yeah. yeah, I've done the Indiana Jones one. I've done um, the Pirates of the Caribbean. I've got a few. Do you know what I mean? And they are they're really good fun to play. Yeah, they just announced a new one. Um, it's only for iOS though. It's the uh, Lego right. Star Wars: The Yoda Chronicles. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I saw that. I, I was excited. I thought it was going to be coming to the PS3 as well, but it's only iOS. All right. All right. Uh, we can talk about new releases uh, for this week. On the retail shelves, we've got uh, Soul Sacrifice for the Vita, which we've talked about a bit. Uh, also, Deadly Premonition, the director's cut. Have you guys ever played that? I know it was like an old Xbox game a long time ago, like I think three years ago. Yeah, I never got a chance to play it. Yeah. Not me either. I looked at it. I looked at a few trailers and some videos, and it doesn't look too exciting, but everybody keeps raving about how amazing this game is, and I just I don't see it, so I don't know what what all the hype's about. I'm thinking about picking that up. I might do it. Out. Depends how much it is. If it's like 30 bucks, then maybe I'll pick it up. But yeah. I don't know. It's uh, From what I've seen, it's not one I would pay 64. Yeah, it's it's only 40. So. Okay, that's not too, too bad. Yeah. I think I'll probably just end up renting it if I do get around to playing it. I've just got so much other stuff to play mm -hmm. right now. So. Then on the PSN, we yeah. have a Zombie Tycoon 2, which if you are a PlayStation Plus member, you actually got for free this week. It's the final uh, final game from the Indie Spring Fever. So I haven't played played it yet. I got, I've gotten distracted with Neverwinter, but I do look, look toward playing it tonight. Probably will end up doing that a little bit. Uh, from what I've heard, it's like an RTS. Um, I guess there's multiple characters that you can play as. And then there's some online multiplayer, and the multiplayer should, or from what I've heard, is really fun. Uh, but there's only one map, so it gets kind of dull and repetitive after a while. But I'll check it out. And then we also got uh, Far Cry Three Blood Dragon. And yes, yeah, pretty interesting. A lot of people have been confused on what this is. Um, 
it's basically Far Cry. Th- it's it. It's a standalone game. It's it looks like Far Cry Three. It plays like Far Cry Three. It's basically the same engine as Far Cry Three, but I don't know if you guys are into PC gaming. A uh, really popular thing that they a lot of they do for a lot of games is they add mods, like they reskin over the game and just change yeah. things around. That's basically what this is. It's a fourteen ninety nine. You don't have to have Far Cry to play this. It's just a, like a professionally done mod for Far Cry. So. It's, yeah, it's all like '80s themed and yeah, it looks awesome. Yeah, <laughs> I'm so stoked to play it. Yeah, Pretty is good. it downloadable content or can you you know can yeah. you buy it like on a disc? Yeah. Uh, no, I think it's just in retail stores. Or sorry, right. just on uh, uh, just download. Yeah, yeah. Right. just on the PS Ten store. But yeah, yep. I'm looking forward to play it. I, I watched some gameplay and was pretty surprised. There's actually there are dragons that you fight and hunt instead of like the old wildlife. Like, there's no tigers or anything like that. There's dragons that fly around, shoot mm-hmm. lasers out of their eyes. And then the music in the background's crazy. It, it It's really good. So I'm looking forward to playing that. It's just, I heard it's pretty long, and it's almost like playing Far Cry 3 again, which isn't a bad thing, but I just recently finished that up, so I don't know if I want to jump back into it again. Makes sense. And uh, for PS Plus, we, like I said before, uh, North America got Zombie Tycoon 2. And it looks like the Europe store got uh, Hitman, Catherine, and Melissa. Yeah. Did you guys play Hitman mm-hmm. and Catherine? I played Hitman. I uh, I played it before. I played it when it just came out. Uh, I got the platinum on it, and I, I loved it. I it, was, it, was, it was a very good uh, addition. Although, a bit easier approach. It's not, uh, it doesn't ask as much as you, of you as the other um, punishing games. But the difficulty was really, really hard in uh, old school games. This one's a little bit easy, but still tough. Yeah. But I, f- I found it really, really enjoyable. Cool. And I've, I've read up about Catherine. I've read kind of a story about it, what, the, what it's about, but I've never played it. But I got a good summary of Junior there last night and what the, how the game kind of plays, so I really am interested in playing it. Yeah. No, I found it very difficult, man, to be honest with you. You know, I was one of the few that actually bought it on disc, <laughs> and um, I found it really difficult. You know what I mean? I I'd that. say if you were going for if you were going for the platinum, you, you're gonna you get it's gonna take you a while to get it. That's my opinion on it. Anyway, I don't know if like I said to Claire yesterday, I don't know if I gave up on it a little bit too soon because of the actual gameplay itself. Do you know what I mean? Because it's like a, a kind of um, a stack of blocks where the blocks turn and you've got to you know it's almost like a Tetris but the other way around. You're on a time limit. Blocks are disappearing and you're climbing. Do you know what I mean? And um, I, f- mm-hmm. I, I don't know. I don't know if it was just the way that the game actually played that that made me not put the effort in, because the you know the actual game itself is beautiful. You know, it's, it's one of them games that attracts you to it straight away. But like I said, I just found it a little bit maybe annoying, so I gave it a miss <laughs> and got rid of it. All right. So well, um, yeah, since I've already played and that is. Um uh, Hitman, that was our like uh, headliner game taken away from me, so I only since after listening to the beating that Malicious has had to get enough to two lads earlier, I don't think I'd be playing that, so Catherine's going to take really left for me this month, so I will give, it's, I'll I'll give it a shot. Defi- yeah, I'd definitely say everybody should play, you know what I mean? Because, it, you know, it's totally different. Yeah, It's nothing that, that you, you get, you're going to have played before. And I think if you get into it, you know, my, my partner, she's absolutely crazy about them sort of games. Um, but even she gave up after about half an hour. So, yeah, I played the demo right. when it first came out. I actually liked what I played. Yeah. It, it, like you said, it's something completely different. But I've always yeah. wanted to go back and play it. I just never got around to it. I remember when it first came out and they had the special editions. It like came with like a pillowcase and a bunch of really weird stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's what you what you'd expect off the lock a, a Japanese style type game, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah, yep. All right, uh, let's go ahead and get into some of the news stories. That's some of the bigger ones that have came out over the, the since the last time we've recorded. Uh, we'll start with the GTA Five trailers. So, did you guys check them out? I actually have. Yeah. I'm kind of like a uh, no. <laughs> I haven't. Yeah. There's, there's a that few games. Sad. There's a few games that I'm refusing to just watch any coverage of, and G- GTA Five is one of them. 
So I, I didn't watch it, but what'd you guys think? From what I saw, um, I watched all three of the character trailers and I actually really liked it. Um, the, the rich white guy character, I can't remember his name. Um, he, he kind of, rem- it kind of reminded me of, um, watching Sopranos. He kind of reminded me of a Tony Soprano type. Um, but yeah, each of the characters' trailers were really... It gives you an idea of who they are and what their backstory is. And it, I'm more inclined to want to buy it. Uh, um, because, I mean, after I play GTA 4, I'm like, no, I'm done with GTA games. Because it's just it's the same thing over and over. I get bored with them too quickly. Yeah. But uh, now the trailers for this look really good. It didn't give me any gameplay, but it gave me a good insight into the characters themselves. Oh, so there's nothing spoily in it? No, not that I've seen. Okay, cool. Did you hear about uh, Grand Theft Auto 1 and 2 coming to the PSN network? I think they just talked about yeah, it yesterday. It actually they, got really rated. Cool. Yeah. they got rated by the ERSB. And every time that that has happened, as I've seen on Twitter in the last six months, it, the game has eventually came to the PSN. It okay. happened with Vice City, Vice City and San Andreas, the Kingdom Hearts uh, HD collection as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A lot of stuff like that as well. So when that tends to happen, I think, and the Jack and Dexter collection happened that way as well. And uh, when that kind of stuff happens, it's almost sure that's going to happen. So I'm very excited about that. Yep. Hopefully, there's trophies. I love Grand Theft Auto games, man. I absolutely think that one yeah. of the best genres of games out there. I don't know if you. Sorry, I had to interrupt the talk about Grand Theft Auto. But uh, what you said uh, about the trophies with the first two games. Um, I did come across something that Sony did apply for a patent to put the trophies into the PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2 games. Yeah, I remember reading that. Yeah. Hopefully that yeah, does go through. That would be really cool. I would... That would be the ultimate thing that they could give me if I could go back and platinum my favorite games on PlayStation 1 and PlayStation 2. I mean, if I could get the Final Fantasy 9 platinum yeah. and the Final Fantasy 7 platinum... Then, yeah. uh, yeah, right when you're saying that, I thought of Final Fantasy VII. That would be amazing to just go back and play that again for trophies. Yeah, oh, man, trophies. So, man. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And Final Fantasy XII, man, if they did that, I'd play so many new games again. Yeah. I really, really would. And Kingdom Hearts, that would be another fun one to go through. Yeah, well, I think they're going to come HD collection anyway. Oh, that's right. Yeah, That, that collection is weird. I remember it was Kingdom Hearts and then... Yeah, uh, like a 1.5. DS. Yeah. See, there was, there was two... PSP Kingdom Hearts games and there was two PlayStation 2 ones and I only played two PlayStation 2 ones and I loved them I loved them yeah. loved them I really really did love them uh, but I never played any PSP ones but the way the HD collection one is is the first one and one of the PSP ones and then the second the HD collection come now with the second one and the second HD collection so yeah. like it, it, uh, it's it's a it's tough because I think my favorite game, game was the second one. So even though I'm going to get the first one, I'm going to really, really enjoy it. I'm still going to have to wait to get the best. Yeah. And what I really, really want. But at least it is coming. So that's what I'm very happy about. I played the first one and the second one. And then I played the first one that came out for the DS. I don't remember what it was called. I think it was like Birth by Sleep or something like that. I don't know. You were, it, it was like a card game. It was really weird. It wasn't really Kingdom Hearts. And then that sort of played the one that came out recently for the 3DS. I don't remember the name of that one, but I, I didn't really... I couldn't get into it. I don't know. But. Yeah, then kind of... It's the same with the, when they made uh, that Jack or Secret Agent Clank on the PSP and stuff like that, you know. And, yeah. I mean, they're nice little spin-offs, but they're no Ratchet and Clank. They're no base game. It was just it was, that was a really cool idea when they first came out with that, like Disney characters in the Final Fantasy universe. I thought that was awesome. Oh, yeah, I I just couldn't believe it. Like once I found out, like the first thing that brought me to it was to make us a Final Fantasy. That's the that's the reason why I brought it. Yeah. And I was thinking, oh, Disney, like that. I would that didn't seem like something I would have been interested in. But uh, playing it was just an absolute joy. I mean, it's a very well done story. So I mean the way you go through all the worlds and stuff like that, you know? Yeah. You're, you're visiting you're, all the Disney movies, going through, like, Nightmare Before Time, or Nightmare Before Her- Christmas. Hercules, man. Yeah. And, uh, and it has a lot of the voice actors as well, you know, that sort of are really, really well done voices to the original actors, you know what I mean? I, I could have swore that Genie in Aladdin was Robin Williams. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe it's just my nostalgia playing tricks in my head, but 
I think it really did seem like that that way. But yep. yeah, it was a great game. Loved them. Okay. Uh, back to the news. Uh, we also had the Beyond Two Souls trailer, which is another game that I'm not looking at any coverage of. Just complete blackout of Beyond Two Souls, and I think Last of Us. I'm done looking at trailers for that too. But what do you guys think of the trailer for that? <laughs> Amazing. Absolutely amazing. I can't wait for that game to come out. Yeah, it's going to be awesome. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it too. Certainly. I think you know, I, I was a massive, massive fan of Heavy Rain. Yeah. Oh, I love that game. Very good yeah. game. And and this just looks like they've perfected exactly every, everything that they've put into Heavy Rain just looks like it's been perfected. Do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Not only that, they've got like a much better uh, acting cast as well. Really looking forward to it. Yeah, I was really excited when they had announced Ellen Page as the lead voice actor. I thought that was really cool. Yeah, yeah I think it's going to do a really good job having her in there. Yep. I, th- I, think, yeah, I think that's, that's how, you know, how games are progressing these days. You know, that that's how it is actually happening. You know, you're getting like, proper A-list, um, like, kind of stars coming over to the games. You know what I mean? That's been happening a while, though. I remember, like, um, your father character in Fallout 3 is Liam Nielsen. Yeah. I said A-list. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. That's not Liam Neeson. He will find you. He will find you and hunt you down. <laughs> he has a very particular set of skills. Yes. Good luck. One that he has acquired over many years. <laughs> 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 you're going to yeah. be taken. Yeah. Taken. <laughs> We're not the bro. <laughs> <laughs> And then you have Nolan North in pretty much every game, too. So, yeah. Pretty good work. Yeah, yeah, find me a game that he isn't in. Yeah, pretty much. He, That's what it's coming he was to. A, he was a voice nice. character in the game I made. <laughs> <laughs> He'll do just about anything. <laughs> All right. And then uh, we got a few DLC announcements. Uh, Injustice announced their first DLC character. It'll be Lobo. I don't remember the date on that, though. But he should be coming here pretty soon. Um, just like an old, he's an older DC character. He looks like a like a biker. I don't remember. His, I don't know much about him, but he's coming. Um, and then I saw the uh, the trailer for it, and he looks pretty badass. Yeah, he does. Yeah, reminds me a lot of the Punisher, though. I don't know if he's supposed to, but that's what that's the vibe I got. Yeah, kind of. I could kind of see that. Uh, and then Borderlands Two has their fourth and final DLC pack that was just announced actually today. And uh, June 25th, you'll get uh, Tiny Tina's Assault on Dragon Keep. No idea what it's about, but it should be coming on the 25th. Um, I think there's another... So, basically... What? Go ahead. No, oh, there's another character that they're announcing. They did announce, like, a month ago. It should be coming out, I think, mid-May. It's one of the... Mm-hmm. What are the little guys with the mask? What are they called? Psychos or something like that? It's like a, like a beefed-up psycho dude. Oh, okay. Uh, he looks pretty cool. So I'll probably be playing Borderlands so, 2 when that character comes out, finish the playthrough, and then go through all the DLC, because I haven't played any of the DLC yet. So, Well, you just wait till August, and then they'll have the uh, Game of the Year edition out. <laughs> Good point. Yeah, might, <laughs> if, might, might just do that. I'll, I'm probably going to wait, because I haven't really bought any of the DLC, and I've just got my Macromancer, so I'll wait and get get the Game of the Year edition, get all the extra DLC for it. Yeah. And then we also have the Metal Gear Solid Legacy Collection, which includes... Yay! Sorry, I'm a little excited. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty big news. Uh, eight games. Metal Gear, Metal Gear 2, Metal Gear Solid, Metal Gear Solid 2, uh, Metal Gear Solid 3, Metal Gear Solid 4, Metal Gear Solid Peace Walker, and then the VR missions. So, looking forward to picking that up. Having the whole collection on one disc would be pretty exciting, so... Now, did you pick up the um, HD collection? I never did. So with Metal Gear 2... No, okay. So then I think for you it wouldn't be so bad. I mean, for me, I'm going... I know I'm going to buy it, but it's like, I just bought the HD collection. I do already own 2 and 3 on PS2. I own 1 on PS1. Um, I've got Peace Walker now in the HD. It's like, do I really want to buy it again? Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean... Metal Gear I, that too. Was, I wasn't it going does. to get it. 
I wasn't going to buy it uh, because I thought I already have all the games because I got a on the PlayStation Network. I got the PS One Metal Gear, I got the HD collection with the other ones. I got Metal Gears on the four, and obviously with the HD collection, you get the first two Metal Gears on it on Snake Eater. So I thought I had the whole Legacy collection until I found out there's the Metal Gear Solid PS One VR missions, yeah. and now I'm just like, oh my god, like. This is the take first time money. Peace Walkers take came out. Was Peace Walker on the HD collection? Or is it the... Peace Walker was on the HD, yeah. There was the Vita HD collection that it wasn't on, I think. I know it wasn't on one. Yeah, yeah. that's correct. Okay. It wasn't on the Vita one, because you could just take the PSP version, but that didn't have um, trophies? trophies on it. Yeah. I'm hoping, I'm yeah, hoping to see trophies in all support. of these. Yeah. That would be sweet. I just want to mention there that uh, the reason why the Metal Gear Solid Legacy Collection isn't coming to Xbox is because they obviously don't have the Blu-ray discs capacity of the discs that the PlayStation 3 uses, so Metal Gear Solid 4 being the file size that it is would take up seven DVD discs. And I think that's a bit ridiculous. That's why they're not getting that, so I'm really, really happy that at least one of the best Metal Gear games is still PlayStation exclusive. It was, um, it's, it was born on PlayStation. Yep. Properly, it was. I mean, you had the Nintendo ones, but like, are they considered the best Metal Gears of all time? You know, and, no. It was born on PlayStation, and it ended on the PlayStation as well. So It's not over. We still have two more games coming out. Yeah, the whole main first part, I mean, whatever to do to the story into the future, it would just be a different... Um, a different age of Metal Gear or something like that. The whole main Solid Snake story yeah. is on PlayStation. I remember you playing Metal Solid for the very first time. I loved it so much. Just that Sniper Wolf boss fight and then Psycho Mantis. How he could like read your mind unless you took your PlayStation controller and put him in the second controller <laughs> slot. That was... Scared to shit on me, man. <laughs> did, did anybody else try doing it on the later game? <laughs> yeah, yeah, man. Out. I remember you can do was... that on... Um, on um, no, you can if you switch your controller over to the second port, it still works on Metal Gear Solid Four. Mm-hmm. If you use the second controller, like if you reassign it on the PlayStation Three, like it's still mm-hmm. Matt, Matt, you know um, Metal Gear Four, where you know I mean he's uh, it kind of like you kind of do the same thing. You switch controller ports, don't you? Mm. And it kind of takes the piss out of you for doing it. Yeah, I remember. Him reading, bit. I remember him reading the files off your memory card. Yeah. <laughs> or like having to look at the back of the C D case to yeah, get for the Merrill's code. frequency. Merrill's yeah. frequency at yeah. fourteen fifty or hundred and forty dot fifteen or eighty five. I'm not 85, sure. Eighty five, yeah. That's eighty five, yeah. What was that for? Yeah. That was Merrill's um frequency, codec frequency code, yeah. on the back of the disc case, yeah. remember? Yeah, I don't remember that. Yeah, it's crazy. But back before the days of the internet, when you could just, you know, type into Google, where it's frequency. Mm-hmm. Kind of yeah. taking some, a, a, a little bit of it away, hasn't it? You know what I mean? Having the internet, <laughs> having walkthroughs and stuff. Yeah. Like, I remember, like, going into, like, Virgin Mega Stores and uh, opening up, you know, these walkthrough magazines just to see bits that I'm stuck on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not purchasing, I'm just ripping the, the wrapping open, just have a little look. <laughs> yeah. Oh, another announcement yeah. that uh, we should probably talk about. Um, I don't know if you guys would want to talk about it since you're so so big on Battlefield 3, but the new Call of Duty game got announced. Did you guys hear about that? Call of Duty yeah. Ghosts? Let's, yeah. Let's, what's the next skip. topic there? Let's we'll skip next that. topic, yeah. We'll skip it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so that was an announcement that wasn't necessary because we already <laughs> knew a new Call of Duty game was coming out in November. Yeah, yeah. pretty much. And... The only thing, no, no, don't, no, don't get me started because people start hate me online when I start talking about that kind of stuff. You know, I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to publicly state my uh, opinions on Call of Duty. So this is the next subject there. I think the last one just killed it for me. I don't even care anymore. It's just the same thing over and over again. I always try to get it and I'll play through the campaign. Uh, Modern Warfare Three was actually decent, but Black Ops Two I just didn't care for. It was not fun for me at all. So you know, I'm just skipping. I'll, this I'll one be honest with you, right? The, the, the main selling point for uh, Call of Duty games is the multiplayer. Do you know right. what I mean? That's what yeah. people yeah. are mainly interested in, and that's the like longevity of the game. Now, yeah. you know, they they could basically they could have gone back to Modern Warfare Two and just kept releasing DLC for it all the way up until the present day. Do you know what I mean? And that's all you that's all you get in with Black Ops. 
Yeah. That's all you're getting with modern warfare these days, man. It's just the same game over and over and over and over again, and it's just a ball. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't really care for the multiplayer. That never really appealed to me. So. Mm. Yep. Just gonna set this one out, probably. Um, well, I was a fan of Call of Duty. Like I said, like I had five five Call of Duty platinums. Like the last really really good one. I know I have the two latest Black Ops platinums. I don't have the Modern Warfare three, but the last good one that I enjoyed was World of War. Yeah, as a brilliant, big, brilliant game. The the story, the campaign in World of War is fucking mm. amazing. Yes. The multiplayer as well. The multiplayer yeah, the multi- was multiplayer was good because there was no battlefield at that time. In, well, there was bad company, but I wasn't really too much into bad company. Not bad company, too bad company. The first one, I never yeah. even played it. Like I, I was in the minority then of being a, a, a battlefield bad company fan when everybody else was on uh, Call of Duty. Although I, I own Call of Duty World at War, um, I was also on uh, Bad Company. Well, I everybody, everybody say to me, "What the hell are you playing that for?" You know, what I mean, get on, get on Call of Duty. But you know, I was stuck with it, and I think uh, over the years it's just got a lot better. No, and see, when I first started playing online, uh, I played PC and I played Call of Duty, the very first one uh, with pa- Pavlov's map. Like that's amazing. And I played Battlefield 1942 equally. I played both of them equally. Then when it came to the PS3, I played COD more until. BF3, Kevin, and then that just destroyed every single first person shooter I've ever played and just announced yeah, itself as king, and that was it. There's no turning back now. It continues as well, doesn't it? You know what I mean? No matter what game comes out, of the uh, you know, present, even present day, Battlefield 3's been out a while now. It doesn't matter what game comes out now, it's like I'll always judge it compared to Battlefield 3, and there hasn't been a single game so far that even, co- even comes close to the standard of Battlefield 3, do you know what I mean? No, no, like I, I for Battlefield Three, I've got the exact same. Well, a little bit under total of hours played on that compared to hours played on all my Call of Duties. I'd say yeah. Battlefield would probably just be about ten hours behind it, which is not too much. Like considering it could be, it's could be eighty, ninety, ninety days. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> but um, okay, are we done trashing Call of Duty now? Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. I told you not to get me started. And then, see, look, oh. right. I still play them. I still enjoy Call of Duty. Do you know, the sad thing is, is that I've, uh, you know, I keep saying every time a new one comes out that I'm not going to purchase it, I always end up with it. And after two weeks of owning it, I'm guaranteed to go back to Battlefield 3 and slake the crap out of it. <laughs> yeah. See, when I have nothing else to play, I just go back to Black Ops 2. You really need to get onto Battlefield, mate. Honestly, you really yeah, need to come, come and join the Band of Brothers. Yeah. And you'll realise the difference, you know what I mean? You'll realise yeah. the difference between the two games. It's playing uh, with people in a team be- teamwork-based game, playing with people who want to do nothing more than work as one big unit. Yeah. 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 Tactically, you, you can't Tactics. do that on, on Call of Duty. You know, Call of, Call of Duty is every man for himself. Put it on, have a quick raz, uh, turn it off. Battlefield Three, I'm telling you, you could you could easily waste six hours without even realising. Have a really good laugh along the way, and you know, I, th- I just think that's what Battlefield Three is all about. You know, I mean, that's what, that's what's had me addicted to it over the uh, the few years it's been released. We have our own server, and you can um, you can adjust the tickets so for how long um, it goes on for. So, like, you can set out max tickets, and we've had two hour games. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so Jordan, you've already got Battlefield for yeah? Was that yeah? I think he got disconnected. Maybe I don't know. All right. Yeah, he oh, said he did. Sorry, he said he's going to be playing. Okay. Yeah, I've, I've got it. So you, but... you you should join us. You should join in one night, mate. Honestly, you'll you'll see the difference. Yeah, maybe I'll. That. One of these days, I'll I'll jump in with you guys and and have a match. <laughs> But anyways, anyway, yeah. a few more, yeah. a few more news topics to talk yeah. about. Um, yeah. A while ago, uh, the people behind Resident Evil uh, announced uh, an upcoming game, and they said they're working with Bethesda, and they actually announced the game is called Zvi. Um, sounds pretty cool. I'm probably going to look into it. I don't know much about it. I haven't really read a whole lot on, into it, but that was announced over the past couple weeks. Um, 
we else have does anybody have anything to say about that anybody know anything about the game no okay I've just no, seen no, some that actually look pretty interesting but what uh, what genre is it what type of gameplay it's just like Resident Evil like the good Resident Evils is what it looks like just the survival horror what the original PlayStation 1 Resident Evils it looks more along the lines of that and less what they've turned yeah. Resident Evil into uh, supposedly yeah. this Resident oh. Evil Resolution, Revelations that comes out later this month actually is I keep hearing it's the best Resident Evil ever I don't know if that's mm. true or not but that comes out pretty soon I'm very very hesitant to play a game on the PS3 that was ported from the 3DS I don't know how that's going to turn out but everyone says the story behind it's really really good you see, I'm a massive fan of the original Resident Evils, and although I, I you know, I like the the latest ones, uh, they, they don't even come into the same category as the, you know, the originals that were on PlayStation One. Yeah, I agree. All right, and we also have the the Jack and Daxter collection, which has been on PS3 for two or three years now. I'm not sure exactly, uh, but that was just rated by the ESRB for the Vita. Um, I think they made the official announcement as well. Uh, but, uh, don't have a date for that either, but that should be coming soon. And then in 2015, we also have the Ratchet and Clank movie. Did you guys see the trailer for that? Yeah, I did. Yeah, very excited. Like I said, I, mean, I, I thought that looked awesome. Yeah. I can't wait to see Copernicus Cork in all his glory. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it looks great. The trailer actually was pretty pretty humorous. I got a kick out of it. Yeah. He's by yeah, far he's my terrible. favorite member, man. Captain Quark is the best. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I was in. Actually, tonight I'm actually starting. I'm playing through the HD collection again of Ratchet and Clank. Just planned on doing that tonight. So, nice. can't wait to get started on that. Then, um, one last thing is the Remember Me trailer. Just actually got released today. It's just Ooh. another trailer for Remember Me. Uh, I didn't watch it. Right underneath the video, it said there's a giant spoiler alert that this game video includes spoilers from the game, so I didn't watch it. This is the other game that I'm looking forward to quite a bit, so if you guys want to check that out, I will put a link somewhere around this video, so you guys check that out. Um, but anybody else have any news stories? Anything else that jumped out at you guys? No. Uh, oh, one thing that did happen, I think it could have been today or yesterday, I just want to let people know, playing here now, apparently the ending and story details for the PlayStation exclusive game, The Last of Us, have been leaked online, so if you don't want to know any details, I'd watch what you go into about um, The Last of Us, because no one, Naughty Dog's uh, storytelling, I mean, I want, I want, I hate spoilers, I hate, hate, hate. So I'm trying to avoid everything out. It's a total blackout for me on the last bus because I know that the details are online. So yep. those are the four games I'm trying to stay away from as much as I can. Is The Last of Us Remember Me, Beyond mm-hmm. Two Souls, and GTA Five? I want to know nothing about it until I play the game. So yeah, same here. Same here. I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing because I mean it's. It can, with some game trailers, it can be like movies where they just give you too much, right. and you're just like, "Wow, I've seen all the best parts now." I don't yeah, know show your best parts. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. You know, there's nothing better than putting a game on, um, knowing nothing about it, and it being <laughs> one of the best games that you've ever played. You know, without I mean? having any preconceived notions or yeah. judgments about the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and there's definitely. No- yeah, it seems like a really sometimes yeah. a really good game. You can go in there with like really high expectations and just hate the game, and I. would don't really want that to happen with any of these, so I mm-hmm. just complete media blackout on those four games. Mm-hmm. Or the, you find games where the uh, reviews are absolute shit, and you're like, well, I'm not going to play that then. Yeah. But eventually you get around to just trying it for the sake of it, and it's an amazing game. Yeah. So, I'm a little biased on trusting reviews. Yeah. Somebody just do up a body bag then. <laughs> I don't know what that is. <laughs> That's what it sounded like. <laughs> Yeah, anyway. All right. Uh, something we didn't do in the first episode we want to do in the future uh, is extend this uh, extend a segment to you, to you get to listeners out there. Um, if you guys have any questions, want to ask us it, pretty much anything, feel, uh, always feel free to do so. Um, you could leave questions on Twitter, uh, on the Band of Brothers website, or on the YouTube video that I post the podcast on. Just anything you anything you want to ask us uh, we have a couple already actually so uh claire yeah. if you want to go through those no, no problem um uh, does 
questions that were put up on Twitter, on the Band of Brothers Twitter, from uh, two uh, BF3 Bros members. It was uh, one by Gunny Goon. He asked, would it be best to make a PSN account in the EU area for PlayStation Plus? And what I say to that is 100%. I mean, if you're outside any kind of territory, it's it's easy, easy to make up a new account on the PlayStation Plus or on, on the EU store, sorry, with an EU account and you still have to buy in euro, so you won't be able to buy a local um, PSN card to top it up. Um, but there's multiple ways around it. You can buy them online through eBay and stuff like that. And a lot of bros members anyway live in the EU, so you could definitely source someone out. But the content of the PlayStation Plus EU yeah, to so North America is a lot better. You actually can't do that um, if you don't have a PlayStation. If you don't like the games that you get for free on PlayStation Plus, you can't launch on a different account unless that account. Yeah, I, I, it I means have, a separate account. You yeah. can share the accounts. Uh, you know, if I downloaded something from American um, or US account, I could then play it on the uh, EU account. Yeah, you can do that. Yeah, because yeah, I know, cause, like, I have well, a couple we should accounts, do that. With... I have a couple we accounts on that. my PS3, and one of them doesn't have PlayStation Plus, and if it can't launch any of the games that were free on PlayStation Plus. The ones I paid money for I can launch, but the ones that were free I can't. So I don't think if you have a EU account and you're trying to download free stuff that North America gets, I don't think it'll work. No, yeah, oh, okay. it won't work. It won't work that way. But I was saying that if he sets up an EU account and becomes an EU Plus member, he'll be able to download games and then sign into his North American account and play it on yeah. that and earn the trophies on that. Yeah, you can do it that way. Because I would have done that. I was thinking about doing it for the North America, but you don't get really good games, so I just done it. But I have a, <laughs> I have a North American friend upstairs. I, I talk with him a good li- a good lot. But he has an EU account and he plays all the EU stuff as well. On his American account, he's got like 117 platinums. Huh. Yeah, because like any um, plus content that I download on mine, my girlfriend can access on her account, and she doesn't have plus. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's all as long as it's on the one PlayStation. That's what yeah, that one system. Yeah. So I actually I was going to say that to you boys. If I mean the the content of the plus on EU is a lot lot better anyway like it would be worth it even just to try it for a, a 90 month sub is only 15.99 euro like mm-hmm. so uh, you should set up an eu account and get the plus off that and you can get all our games and then or even guess, even if you can get like um you know like a redeem code for like a, a month free trial of playstation plus yeah I've, mm-hmm. got month, I've got that actually i've got i've got codes off twitter I've got about three or four we're planning to give away but i can give to one of you if you just want to try it out yeah yeah i'd be willing to give it a try yeah uh, the, well, that's your answer. Um, Goody Goon and Crash Rider, uh, one of our um, followers on Twitter, I've been talking with a good bit, has been asking, will you guys be playing BF4 on PS3 or PS4? And my answer to that is PS3 and PS4. I mean, this is, game, this is a game that's hotly anticipated on every bro's mind since, I mean, the first few weeks into Battlefield 3, we were already, you know, it just... It's it's hugely up on the list for at least forty of our members, so we we won't be able to touch it. We'll be there day one, representing on both accounts on PlayStation Three and PlayStation yeah. Four. Yeah, I'll definitely be buying uh, on both consoles. You know, I mean, uh, I think it's coming out first on the PlayStation Three anyway, isn't it? Because that comes yeah. out before the the PS Four. I think that's the main reason why I'm going to be doing it, and then I'll um, move over to the PlayStation Four when that's released. A good way to to think about it, what I was saying was um, another game that got announced is Crash Gen being coming out on PS3 and PS4 is Watch Dogs, but I'm I'm not going to play that. I'm going to wait until I'm, I play it on my PlayStation 4 because that game's got such good hype around it that I want to play it. I want to experience that mm-hmm. on next gen. But something like Battlefield 3, or sorry, Battlefield 4, which I absolutely love, I, I couldn't wait. Even if it was a week, I couldn't wait. I literally couldn't wait. I have to buy it straight away. So we're yeah. playing on PS3 and PS4. Yeah, just just while we're on the uh, subject of Battlefield 3 again, I um, thought it'd be best to announce uh, the Interclan uh, tournament that we're putting up. Um, you know, word spreading throughout the Bros community that we are planning um, to host a Bros v Bros Interclan match. Um, and it's basically about tactics, and it's about to see what players are good for which role. Yep, so if any of our Battlefield 3 members are listening to this now, 
constantly check the website because me and Junior will be posting up a lot more content in the private section about our individual tactics and, and when to be online and what dates and what times and yeah. obviously the clan matches that we come up so, so just make sure you check the website as, as whenever you can get the chance and that's all for the questions anyway. yeah. yeah keep them coming you know, for the next episode, you know, whatever questions are there, you know, I'm here to answer them. Yeah, whether it's right. about games, whether it's about Battlefield 3. Um, you know, we, we've got a dedicated uh, area on the website now that you can check um, and that you can post in. Uh, or you can do it like on Twitter, like, uh, like Flip Trick said earlier. Yeah, give them um, individual questions to either the Band of Brothers with Twitter or and obviously Boom and, and Flip Trick have their own separate Twitter accounts and YouTube accounts. So if... Um, if you have any questions you, know, if you want to ask Dave individually, just feel free to ask him up on that. We'll, we'll pull it all into one big section next week, uh, next week's episode. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, that pretty much wraps up everything we have to talk about this week. Uh, we'll definitely be back same time next week um, for the third episode. Um, if you guys want to check out what we're up to, uh, you can always uh, follow my or subscribe to my YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash fliptricktv. Um, I'm also on Twitter. It's just at FlipTrick, F-L-I-P-T-R-I-Q. Um, or you can check out my live stream, which is twitch.tv slash FlipTrick. I'm actually starting a new event. Um, I've noticed there's a ton of PlayStation exclusives that I haven't played lately, or played over the, the course of the, the PS3, so I'm going to go back and play through all of those, like the Infamous, Kill Zones, Resistance, Jack and Dexter, Sly Cooper, all the Ratchet and Clanks. Um, just like pretty much all the exclusive, maybe live streaming pretty much every night until the PS4 launches. Probably like two four hours a night, just something fun I thought I could do. Uh, just like a PlayStation appreciation live stream. So I'm starting that actually tonight. Uh, I'll probably be doing that for a couple hours. Uh, we're going to start off with Ratchet and Clank since that was my favorite PlayStation exclusive series. Um, but if you guys ever want to check that out, it's uh, twitch.tv slash flip trick. Does anybody else have any awesome. plugs they want to shout out? Absolutely, I will uh, jump in here. So for any of you guys who haven't uh, checked out my podcast as well, it's the Boom Headshot podcast. You can give it a listen at uh, boomheadshot.podomatic.com or I actually just finally launched our, my new website, which is boomheadshotpod.com, so you can find all the episodes there. Give them a listen, throw me some comments, like, let me know what you guys think. And if you want to chat with me on Twitter, be sure to hit me up. It's at boom underscore headshot. It's H-E-A-D-S-H-0-T. Okay. Yeah. What's your Twitter? Um, Twitter. I run the Band of Brothers Twitter, so I can be contacted there at any time. And um, my home is on the website as well. So at all, any comments or private messaging on the website, definitely you can get through to me straight away. What's the Band of Brothers Twitter? Just for uh, it's at it's at, at Band of Bros. Um, band of B R O Z. I think you have that wrong. Oh no, you don't. You're, you're right. It's just the, cap, the, <laughs> the, 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 the title of it. The different, yeah, there's different capitals in it, but once you tweet it and uh, with the at sign, the capitals doesn't matter. So you automatically get linked. Oh, wait. And Junior, what's your Twitter? Uh, just the at underscore... Uh, no, at Junior underscore Gong underscore 71. Um, you're like, you, I don't use Twitter that much, to be honest with you. Everything that um, that's Twitter based normally comes through the official Band of Brothers, um, but you know, feel free to follow me if you want. All right. Okay. Well, that about wraps up the entire show. Hopefully, you guys enjoyed it. Like I said, if you have any questions you want to leave us, feel free to do so. Um, but we'll look forward to answering all your questions next week, and we look forward to bringing you another show. So, you guys all take it easy. Thanks for listening. Yeah. Stay frosty. <laughs> Gunny goon. Gunny goon. Yeah. It's the Bulls cast gamers. Bro, 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 b